Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Miami Heat lose 127-102. Boston gets the victory on the road in the second game of the Eastern Conference Finals. And to be honest with you, it was domination from the start. The Miami Heat did get off to a good start. I got to preface that by saying they got off to a good start in the first couple of minutes, but the Boston Celtics put it into that very quickly, started shooting the ball very well, rebounded the ball, very well defended the ball very well etc they couldn't miss and it showed and they ran the score up very early and put that game to rest by halftime now the Miami Heat did come back do some good things in the third quarter but the Boston Celtics kept their foot on the gas and withstood a very strong run from those Heat and uh, put the game away P.J. Tucker had to leave the game with a knee contusion, so I don't know what that means for the series going forward in his regard, but that is not a good thing to say the least. Um, but ultimately, you just have to give credit to the Boston Celtics. Uh, what I thought I would see was pretty much what I saw. Uh, Uma Yudoka leaned on about seven players, and they all contributed quite a bit on both sides of the floor. <clears throat> you got to give credit to Marcus Smart, uh, who was facilitating the ball. Even though he started off bricking, he got his percentages up as the game progressed and was just phenomenal. Peyton Pritchard off the bench. If you look at the plus minus for Peyton Pritchard, Grant Williams, and Marcus Smart, it's absolutely obscene. Over plus 35 for each of them. Peyton Pritchard was a plus 41 or something ridiculous like that. Those guys contributed to what was a rout tonight. Um, and of course, you got to give credit to Jason Tatum, who was really shooting the ball very well, getting to the line, making sure that his presence was felt on both ends of the floor tonight. Uh, Jalen Brown was striking fast and striking well. Everything he seemed to do was with a purpose and efficiency. I really enjoyed what I saw from him tonight, especially in that first half. Um, Grant Williams shooting the ball was excellent. I believe he had five threes on the night. That's the Grant Williams I've been calling to see. 0 for 3 Grant Williams is no good for the C's. They need him to score, and that's what he provided. <clears throat> Al Horford. Some miraculous way, he was able to clear health and safety protocol. And because of it, he was out there defending, being big, making shots, rebounding, doing the Al Horford thing. That is a bad situation for the Heat because I believe the Heat are a small team at this point, especially with P.J. Tucker now being removed. That makes them... Uh, thinner so and now you're looking at a situation where suddenly the injuries um, are more so the heat's concern than the Celtics how quickly things change from one game to the next now the Celtics only missing Derek White who will be back uh, of course once again congratulations to him and his family on a new baby he'll be back at some point very soon with a healthy body ready to go Marcus Smart obviously was able to get through this game looking great and healthy Robert um Williams was looking great out there. Tom Lord was 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 active and looking healthy. So the Boston Celtics are starting to sharpen up at the right time. Unfortunately, Nick Stauskas uh, hurt his foot in garbage time at the end of the game. Uh, so hopefully he'll be all right. But as we know, he's not going to be a player they rely upon. So you won't miss him at all. Uh, this is a situation where as long as Peyton Pritchard continues to shoot like this, Grant Williams a scorer, Jason Tatum's being efficient, Jalen Brown is going at it. I mean, this looks great for the Boston Celtics headed back home. You couldn't feel better for them if you picked them to win this series. Because right now, suddenly the Miami Heat are in a situation where they're scrambling, trying to figure out how they're going to fix up things for their roster. Um, Kyle Lowry, how do you incorporate him back into the situation? Um you know, and, and, and so on and so forth. So, Bam Adebayo only attempted six shots. I understand he helps you a lot defensively tonight. Obviously, with the score being run up as it was, he didn't help defensively enough. You got to attempt more shots, brother. I don't know what's going on since he's been there. Obviously, he's only played for the Heat. But since he's been in this league, his offensive game has diminished drastically. And I don't know what has happened. He was a triple-double threat when he first got into this league. His dribble ability and, and, and things of that nature made him a different type of player. Right now, they've rendered him to basically a uh, defensive player. It's like he's only gifted on that side of the ball, and that is just not who he is. So Miami needs to, 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 I don't know what they need to do, but they need to get more out of Bam out of Bio on the offensive end. This is unacceptable. That is not who Bam was. What the hell did you turn him into? <laughs>
Honestly, what did you turn him into? Okay, so that's I just had to get that out. The next thing I want to say is this. Um, I, I think they're mismanaging uh, Duncan Robinson, and and I think we saw it tonight. I, I like what Spolstra's mentality is about in terms of defense, but I just think that, that he's taken it a bit too far. And while it's gotten him this thus far, it ain't going to get him any further if he doesn't snap out of it. Max Struess, once again, same thing in regards to defense for offense. Max doesn't give me enough consistently on the offensive end. Now, when Max is hot, I think the Heat are unbeatable. But when Max is off, the Heat lose. And once again, we saw that tonight. He shot them out of it. It wasn't just him. Tyler Hero started off with their shooting woes. Obviously, they were having issues defending more so than anything else. But you can't have Max Struess having nights like this. And, you know, you've relied upon him. You bring Duncan Robinson in when you're down 20 force feed him a couple three-point shots you know he's not going to make those shots i mean first of all his legs are cold he ain't played in several games and you're going to bring him in say stop the bleeding uh, i mean the whole building knows he's shooting those those shots obviously there's too much pressure in the eastern conference finals for a guy who hasn't played who you've taken confidence from by not giving him any minutes i mean i guess i just think that you're clearly seeing how mismanaged duncan robinson has been you don't first of all you don't pay him that <laughs> he's not worth that amount and then you don't use him this way when you do it's just it's a mismanagement man they got to get it together because what he does is what they need which is score okay because max screws ain't scoring he's going to attempt shots he's an aggressive player on both sides of the floor i like him but he is not what you guys are using him as he ain't that man he ain't no designated defensive player He's just a guy who plays hard, who who, who can attempt some three-point shots and, and make a few of them occasionally. You know what I'm saying? He's a nice role player, and I like him in your rotation, but not not like this. I mean, he got to a point where you're sitting there looking at him, his face on a stanchion in the background. I'm like, are you guys serious? Like, whose nephew is this? What, what, what is this? And he's turning the ball over at the same time. I'm like, no, nah, look, hey, I get it. I like him too, but stop this. This team is about Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and Tyler Hero. Get get back to what's going to help you win, man. Stop stop featuring guys that are not going to uh, contribute to what it is that you need done, which is scoring right now. So I just I don't know who else going to say it, but I'm going to say it. This Max Struess thing, this needs to stop right now. All right. So now that that's being said, Gabe Vincent, I like him a lot totally different situation he is balling he's the great antithesis to that they're calling his number and he's showing up defensively balling offensively hitting shots sharp quick motions he was part of the solution out there and i think they need to feature him more in this situation because he just has it going so i I would say he needs to be incorporated even more so victor oladipo came in cold man cold bruh but what i will say is this Nine out of ten free throws, that is essential. That's a little bit of that Jimmy Butler juice. As long as he's continuing to put himself in a position to get to the line and make those free throws, he's helpful. But he can't be settling for three-point shots. He's got to connect on drives, stuff like that. I know he's older now, you know what I mean? But he's still an asset on both sides of the floor, especially when he's looking to steal the ball and assist. He's an underrated playmaker. And he can help on that side of the ball, especially with the absence of Kyle Lowry. I wanted to see more playmaking from the Miami Heat. They need to get more assists on the board. They need to play together more so. I thought Jimmy Butler should have looked to dish the ball more as well. Um, you know, looking for his, his offensive players around him instead of, uh, you know, only only going for it himself tonight. I think he did a great job of, of doing what he does. He got 29 points tonight. But you only see, what, two or three assists? That's that's not going to work. You need more continuity. And he had the ball in his hands a good portion of the time. And, of course, when the Miami Heat, uh, excuse me, when the Boston Celtics are able to score this way, um, it's tough. You know what I mean? They're obviously defending as well. So it's not like uh, these guys got open shots. But I think what you did see is Miami, the Miami Heat giving up open shots. And that was unacceptable. You know, when you consider the Miami Heat are supposed to be a great defensive team with all this and that, they didn't give us any of that tonight. We saw a whole lot of 
open Grant Williams, open Preyton Pritchard, open Jalen Brown, open Jason Tatum. And, uh, you know, I just I just feel like, look, if you're going to focus on the defensive side of the ball and that's going to be your result, yeah, that's not going to cut it, obviously. So this is this is a situation where the Boston Celtics took this game. They won this game. They, they, they've they handled business on the road. And uh, they should be looking forward to, to carrying forth what they did at home, um, on the road, at home. I think as we look at history and what it tells us the heat don't play well on the road and considering the fact that they shot poorly tonight i'm not going to be putting any money on those guys shooting better in boston so uh this is a situation where things could shift rather quickly miami needs to get their act together and figure something out they could use the playmaking of kyle lowry at this point now that we see that pj tucker is out i don't think you can afford to, to rest P, uh kyle lowry or or wait any longer at this point. I think now's the time to try to get something out of him, get him re-acclimated into this series, because if you wait any longer, drop game three, and then you try to incorporate him into things, uh, we saw how that went last time. You could end up dropping that game, and you know what the series looks like at that point. So uh, if, if Kyle Lowry can go in game three, it's time to get him back out there now. I think it's time. Better to go through it now than later as the series progresses and things get worse. Um, I think Miami's shooting woes are going to continue. I really do. And if they can't seem to figure out how to defend like they did in game one, where they were closing out on those three-point shooters as fast as we had ever seen, uh, then, then they're going to drop a game or two in Boston real quick. Um, you know, I, I got to say that I had a prediction that this game would be a blowout. I was, uh, <laughs> and like Jason Kidd <laughs> joked about, I had an uh, opposite. You know, yeah, it was a blowout, but it was going the other way. Uh, but there were things I didn't take into account. Obviously, Al Horford uh, being out there was definitely not something I was expecting. Uh, but even if he, uh, you know, even in the event that, that things were not that way, I think Boston probably still would have won this game the same way because of the way the Heat defended tonight. I mean, anybody could have scored on the Heat tonight, to be honest with you, in that first half. It, it wasn't going to be much of a problem for anybody. And, uh, you know, given the fact that the Boston Celtics came out with the intent of playing against a really good defensive team. You know, they played like they were going up against the best defensive team as they were scoring and striking into their motions. Uh, they just came out focused. You know, Jason Tatum was awesome tonight. You got to give him credit. He, he was the Jason Tatum that you want to see. Um, scoring the ball, like I said, getting to the line, being more aggressive, getting into the paint. Um, you know, hitting that elbow uh, three-point shot that is his signature move. And um, you know what I mean? He's, he's, just, he's just in a good groove right now. He's in a really good groove and headed back home. You gotta love what what it looks like for him, uh, especially without PJ Tucker on the floor hounding him potentially. So, yeah, not much rest in this series. You know that's the thing. Things have changed, as I said at the beginning of this video. Now I'm more so worried about the Heat in terms of their uh, injuries and stuff. They they look like the team that's suddenly gonna have to dig in their bench to try to find something. And uh, you know. It, I, I think the, 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 the solution for them is offense. One thing that I can't say, though, is Spolster uh, made a good adjustment in this game from one half to the next. Their rebounding edge uh, was covered because, as I said in the, in the video that I made, uh, they had uh, been down eight rebounds in that game at that point, and they went and uh, covered that up. They, they, they made it a uh, – I think they only lost the rebounding total by one or something like that. So that adjustment was substantial. It speaks to the, the, the what Spolster is capable of doing, uh, but uh, ultimately he has other things he needs to cover up as well. Uh, but all in all, you got to give credit to the Boston Celtics. They only turned the ball over, I believe. I think it was, I don't want to say how many, but it, I was impressed with the amount of times they turned the ball over. I don't want to get that wrong, but it, it was it was good, and they need to continue to take care of the basketball. Um, what else? You know? Once again, I just really appreciate what I saw from Marcus Smart um, passing the rock. You know, like that is something that I called for it to be uh, getting in the pregame video that I made. I said I want to see him facilitate the ball. You know, it, he he's at his best when he's turning his defense into offense and that offense into passing because he's not the greatest shooter. Uh, he's not the greatest scorer, and he can find himself in situations where he's taking bad shots if he if he resorts back to old old ways. I think that. The new Marcus Smart, the Marcus Smart that we're seeing in these playoffs, is much smarter. He's a much more efficient scorer. 
And I think a big part of that is because he looks to be effective offensively in different ways. And I thought that he really had a great offensive game tonight, despite not shooting amazing. Uh, those assists, his rebounds, um, that, that, was, that was what we're talking about there. That's, that's exactly what the Boston Celtics are going to need from him. So, yeah, yeah. Like I said, Peyton Pritchard, I, I think when, look, I saw someone, one of these Celtics fans, I was looking in the comments and they said that they felt like Peyton Pritchard should take Derek White's minutes. He's just flat out better than Derek White. I don't know if he's better than Derek White, but he's looked better in the series. And if he continues to shoot the way that he's been shooting, um, I would I would put more confidence in him. You know, Derek White has been iffy. I like him here and there defensively, but ultimately I thought the team looked a lot better without him tonight. And, uh, you know, that's telling. That's just simply telling. So, uh, for what it's worth, we'll see what Udoka thinks. But I like what I saw out of Peyton Pritchard. So, that's what it is. That is what I got, man. Um, this wasn't one to watch. You know, you definitely want to burn the tape <laughs> if you're the Miami Heat. You burn this one. Um, and you feel like you've taken maybe two or three steps back in this series when you consider you won the first game the way that you did and then drop the second game at home in this fashion. Yeah, this this isn't good, you know. And you lost P.J. Tucker on top of it. I need more from Tyler Hero, man. That's who I need more from. If they're going to bring you in off the bench for a scoring punch, um, you got to be efficient. That's the only way they're going to win. Um, he did a nice little strike as he came into the game when he first checked in. Got fouled, hit his mid-range jumper. You know, really good specific play. But after that, it was clank, clank, clank. He needs to be um, more efficient in the series, and he needs more of them. If he's not scoring above 20 points, uh, you're not getting the full Tyler Hero effect, and that's ultimately what they need. Not half a Tyler Hero, but the Tyler Hero his daddy was talking about, the one he said they can't win without. That's who they need because if he don't show up, they ain't going to win, uh, and he has not showed up in this, particularly this game. So, yeah, they needed more out of him tonight. And, um, you know, I just, I just circle back and say, all in all, the adjustments from this game to the next game are going to be very difficult, I think, for Spolster without P.J. Tucker. Obviously, rebounding the ball, more Deadman. I think Yort 7 wouldn't be a bad idea. I think he's a fantastic stretch 5-4 type of player who can rebound the ball. I've seen good things out of him in the preseason that I have not forgotten about and I think will translate in this series in certain situations. I saw him play a little bit in garbage time. I wouldn't. You know, you guys aren't afraid to play Max Struess and Caleb Martin. I would not be afraid to play uh, Yurt Seven. I think he's just as good as those guys. In fact, I know he is in different ways, but just as good. Uh, he can rebound. He can shoot the three. And you need scoring. Uh, so th I, I think calling his number wouldn't be a bad idea sooner with P.J. Tucker being out. Trust him a little bit. I don't think he sucks, man. I really don't. I've seen enough already. So that's that's one thing. Um and on the Boston side of things, you know, just just keep attacking. Just keep attacking. I think Miami's going to have to prove that they're going to guard that three-point shot. They're leaving Grant Williams open, Peyton Pritchard open, etc. I'd say keep shooting it. You beat the Bucks that way, you know. I mean, your confidence in your ability to be a three-point shooting team should be increasing. That's how I should be. That's how I look at the Boston Celtics at this point. It's like, yo, I feel like... If I'm them, we can shoot with anybody right now. We can shoot with anybody. And so, um, yeah, that's a big deal. That's a very big deal. If they can put up 127 points, you're looking outward and saying, yo, they could probably win the championship if they can keep that up. <laughs> they can win the championship. So that that is a a, a big shot in the arm for anybody that's, that's going for the Celtics because I think the concern for them is can they score? against this Heat team? And the answer is absolutely, especially if the Heat ain't going to defend. So, um, bam, what's up? That's what I'm looking at. It's bam. Bam out of bio. You're the all-star. You're the defensive player blocking shots, saving series and stuff like that. I'm getting six attempts. I'm not getting enough rebounds there. I'm I'm just not seeing the, the pride. You know, it's it's a situation where you're the big on the floor, and I know you're going up against Robert Williams and, and, and Al Horford. That's not minor. 
but you got to take care of home court. That's it. It's the playoffs, Eastern Conference Finals. If you're trying to really do something, it can't just be Jimmy busting his backside out there. It, it can't just be Jimmy. Jimmy had no help tonight. That's what it really came down to. No help. And, and the next best player on this team is Bam Adebayo. So that's who I'm looking at. If you're the defensive guy, why the hell do they have 127 points? My name is BDL44. I thank y'all for watching. And I'm out.